Um, so I'm just going to share a couple of slides to begin with, because obviously we're here to talk about um, the Palomira series uh, primarily. And I know that lots of people here will already know about the Open Access Books Network and may well have been regular attendees at our events. Um, but not everybody will necessarily know about the OABN. So what I want to do to begin with is just to share my screen uh, and just tell you a little bit about the Open Access Books Network, um, who we are, what we do, um, and all those kinds of things. So hopefully you can see that slide. Um, so the Open Access Books Network um, is a dedicated space for conversations about open access books. It began uh, in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, because there were a number of people who were going to conferences which usually weren't about open access books and who wanted um, at those events to talk about them and to, you know, perhaps begin collaborations and share knowledge. Um, but they found that those conversations um, often ended at the end of the event and there was no sort of dedicated space to kind of foster them. So the idea behind the Open Access Books Network was to provide such a space. Um, and as we began uh, at the beginning of 2020, uh, pretty much everything that we've done has been remote. Um, and that's actually worked pretty well in terms of, um, obviously it helps to keep costs down, but it's also uh, much more inclusive. Um, it's easier for people, more people to join. So I think the Open Access Books Network is probably gonna remain a, a, a primarily virtual space um, for collaboration and for information sharing. Um, although we will hope to have some in-person gatherings um, occasionally as well. And it's an open and free network for anyone who's interested in open access books. So if you're, say, an open access book publisher with huge amounts of knowledge, that's fantastic. But equally, if you're just somebody who's interested in open access books and doesn't necessarily know very much, equally, um, this is a place for you too. And there's no kind of formal joining or membership involved. If you come to one of our events, if you use our resources, if you read our blog, um, then you're free to consider yourself a member of the Open Access Books Network. And everything that we do is um, is free. We don't charge for our events. We don't charge for use of our, our resources, all those kinds of things. So we do a mixture of different types of events. We do sometimes panel events, sometimes workshop sessions, sometimes more sort of relaxed, open conversations about a particular issue, um, often about uh, core issues related to OA books or uh, new developments in open access book publishing. We have um, a message board on our website and you can see the link to our website just in that slide there. Um, that's uh, powered by Humanities Commons. So to comment on the message board, you have to join Humanities Commons. But again, that's free and it's not commercial. They won't hassle you with adverts or, or anything like that. Um, we've created different sets of resources aimed at different stakeholder groups. So uh, publishers, um, authors, infrastructure providers and, and funders. Um, some of those are resources we've created ourselves and some of them are things that other groups or people have created and that we think are useful and we direct people to them. We have our own blog uh, where we share news either about the network or we have guest posts from people within the uh, broader OA books community. And we also link to the OATP, the Open Access Tracking Project, um, via our blog posts. Um, and that uh, shares anything that's tagged with the OA books tag. So it's quite a useful um, source of new developments um, in OA book publishing. We have a Twitter account at OA Books Network. We have a YouTube account where we share um, all of our videos and recordings of our events. And we have a mailing list. And this is probably the most useful way for you to stay in touch with us. So I'm just gonna drop it in the chat. Uh, so if you sign up to that, then you will find out about um, anything that we're doing, whether it's uh, an event, a blog post, anything sort of significant that we're involved with will be announced via that mailing list. And in terms of the people who run the OABN, um, I'm one of the coordinators, and then my colleague Tom Mustard at Open and DOAB, Anna Gatamorka at Spark Europe um, are also fellow coordinators. And the OABN at the moment runs pretty much on time that's donated um, by those organisations. Um, it's also a special interest group um, of OPERUS, and the SIG committee meet every six weeks or so to talk about the OABN's activities and development. So we became a SIG last year, and this has actually been a really useful way for us um, to have some dedicated time with a group of people beyond just the three of us, beyond just Tom and Agatha and myself, um, to focus on and think about the Open Access Books Network. Um, and the SIG is very much not a closed shop. So if you want to join the SIG, you don't have to be a member of Operus. Uh, you just have to drop us an email um, at that address there. So hopefully that gives you a bit of information about the OA Books Network um, and about who we are. Um, but today we're here to talk about the launch of the Palomira series of events and how the OABN is working with Palomira. Um, so today from Palomira, 
We have Neil Stern, who's the director of the Open Foundation and co-director of the DOAB, and also scientific coordinator of the Palomira project. And we have Ursula Rabar, who's the community manager of the OAE Book Usage Data Trust, and also the community manager for Palomira. But before I hand over to them, I wanted to ask if there are any other members of the Palomira project on the call, and if there is, would you mind turning your cameras on um, and possibly introducing yourselves as well so that everyone can see who you are and say hi. We've got a few people appearing. Um, Ezebet, would you like to go first? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice to have all of you here. My name is Ezebet Tocifra. Uh, I'm sitting in Berlin. Uh, I'm the Open Science Officer of the Research Infrastructure Daria. And I feel super uh, lucky to have the chance to contribute to the Palomera project. My involvement is, um, uh, is, is, is mainly in uh, the early phases of the project, uh, collecting informations of all kinds about open access book policies across Europe. Thanks, Ashbet. Vanessa? very nice to be here again at the OABN um, and I'm really also pleased to be part of the Palomero project. Um, I think it's really exciting to be getting so much information on OA books, poli book policies and to move that forward. So um, if you don't know me, I'm Vanessa Proudman, Director of Spark Europe. Um, it's a really great team and nice to be on this uh, call today. Thanks. Thanks Vanessa. Sandra, would you like to go next? Uh, hello, I'm Sandra Gigonis. So I'm a deputy director at Open Edition, which is a French national infrastructure. So we have a, a platform for open access books and um, part of the team in the Palomera project. Thanks, Sandra. And Sinjiana, would you like to go next? Yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello from Berlin. Uh, my name is Sunziana Politinano. I'm project manager at OAPEN. And um, yes, I'm also part of the Palomera team. I'm very happy. Thanks, Sunziana. Um, so hopefully that gives everyone a bit of an idea of some, at least, of the members of Palomera. And now I will hand over to Niels um, to begin to tell you a bit more about the project and what it does. And I will also share some slides. So bear with me while I do that. Thank you, Lucy, and uh, really great to see so many people um, attending today. Uh, welcome all, and um, now we uh, will share with you uh, some insights into the Palomera project, and uh, I'll do this with uh, Ursula, so I will present a few slides, and then Ursula, Ursula will come in, and then I will come back, and then back to Lucy. So. First of all, the Palomera uh, project uh, is short for policy alignment of open access monographs in the European research area. So it's about books, basically. And next slide, please. Um, and what we are basically trying to understand is uh, why so few funder policies include books and then try to yeah, we'll understand this and, and come up with recommendations that uh, can change this situation because we know uh, that uh, policies generally are really key drivers for change. So uh, good policies can, can drive to more open access uh, also for books, but currently we only see few of the few policies uh, around. And um, although, um, Recently, um, uh, new policies have come up like uh, UKRI, like the European Commission, for instance. So, but this is what we want to understand. And uh, we is, uh, that's a consortium of 16 members. You can see them uh, here on the slide. And uh, the project is, is coordinated by uh, OPERAS and it's, uh, and OAPEN is the scientific coordinator. It's a two year project. Uh, it began in January this year, and it will end in December 24, and it's funded by uh, under the uh, Horizon Europe framework. Uh, next slide, please. So just a few words on the background for uh, our proposal for the project. Um, a few years ago in 2016, um, 2017, 
um, I was co-authoring uh, together with uh, Ilko Ferreira and Francis Pinter, a landscape study on uh, open access and monographs in eight European countries. This was commissioned by Knowledge Exchange. Uh, Knowledge Exchange. And uh, so we did uh, a lot of interviewing and, and surveying into the situation in these eight countries. And out of, uh, out of that uh, report were, or part of the report were, were some recommendations also, and uh, recommendations to um, look further into uh, the landscape and, and in a more structured way. And knowledge exchange, um, picked up on, on these recommendations in a workshop in 2018 and later in 2021. And uh, out of the 21 uh, workshop uh, came a call for action, the investing in the open access book infrastructure call for action, and uh, also recommending uh, several things that sort of are uh, important uh, building blocks in, in the thinking behind the Palomera project. And uh, if you haven't read these, uh, this call, I would uh, uh, encourage you to do so. Uh, um, and then uh, later in 21, we had the uh, Voices from the Open Access Book Community sessions uh, as part of the OA Books Network here. And uh, you can find all the information about those sessions that were uh, looking into different aspects of OA Book Publishing and bringing together a community of, of many different stakeholders into conversations about uh, books and peer review and uh, licensing and uh, uh, green open access and so on. And finally, also OAPEN had a, a project uh, with the European Research Council. And out of that project uh, came some interesting results, uh, uh, particularly for us was that uh, we did some workshops with uh, research funders that showed uh, a need for convening research funders a bit more focusing in on uh, policy development for open access books, but also implementation and, and uh, evaluation of, of policies. So those are, are some backgrounds uh, for, for this project. Next slide, please. And uh, as I said, the, the overall objective uh, of the project is really to, well, speed up the transition to more open access for books uh, through um, policies and strategies uh, amongst research uh, funding organizations, uh, but also research performing organizations. And we have five specific objectives, as you can see here. And the first one is to develop and coordinate a knowledge base with qualitative data. So documents, uh, surveys, interviews, and quantitative data as well on the OE books policy landscape in Europe, and that's really across the European research area. And the second objective is to then understand the challenges, uh, preventing uh, more uh, funder policies and strategies uh, emerging, uh, and, and, uh, and bring this uh, analysis um, into, into a sort of a more structured, <clears throat> into a structured uh, framework. The, the third objective is to engage uh, the relevant stakeholders beyond the uh, research performing, research funding organizations and the national policymakers. Of course, also other stakeholders like publishers, libraries and researchers, infrastructure providers. And uh, to include them, involve them, engage them in the validation of our findings. So uh, the data collection, the, the, the analysis and the recommendations and uh, to ensure that, um, that we, um, um, well, create further alignment, as you can see on, on diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, when it comes to able policies and strategies. And the fourth objective uh, is to uh, help research uh, funders uh, in performing uh, or in developing policies and strategies. And uh, we will do this through um, providing a forum for funders where they can convene, exchange ideas, and where we can uh, help developing um, ways in which to, to uh, approach uh, uh, the development of funder policies, but also discuss uh, implementation and discuss how uh, those policies can be uh, monitored. And 
fifth objective is uh, really to not only be uh, looking within the European research area, but also invite uh, partners from outside of Europe. So we, we really want to engage with the research funders and, and others um, across, um, across the globe as much as, as we can, of course. Next slide, please. Okay, so I leave this one to Ursula. Please, Ursula. Thank you, Niels, and hi, everyone. It's uh, great to be here. Um, I will talk a little bit more about the stakeholders um, engaged and that are affected by this project, as well as the methodology and timeframe of the project. So um, as you can see from this list, um, there are um, different groups of stakeholders or organizations um, that we consider being very relevant to the Palomar project. And for that reason, uh, we also aim to design the various activities throughout the project. And for example, to gather the evidence, the data, to um, get feedback, to foster engagement um, and communicate with. Um, and we will design these activities based on this list. So as Niels mentioned, we have the national science policy makers, research funding organizations, research performing organizations, publishers, scholarly societies, infrastructure providers, libraries, and researchers. So Palmer is a very stakeholder centric type of project because of its nature and because of what it's trying to achieve. If we go to the next slide, please. And same goes for the Palomera uh, methodology that has been designed with the stakeholders in mind. Um, this methodology is uh, designed with the purpose of, of course, producing these um, actionable recommendations and engagement to advance this policy making for open access books in the European research area. It is also based on a PESLE uh, analysis framework, which stands for uh, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental analysis that helped uh, design and will help design the, the various activities. And um, as you can see from this uh, image, the project is divided into three main phases. The first phase that has begun already is the data collection and knowledge base creation. Um, the second phase for next year is the analysis of the said knowledge base. And the final phase is the um, evidence-based and action recommendation resources creation. Each of these uh, phases will be validated by the community uh, using an um, approach of a social validation. And each validation event um, is, of course, different depending on the output of the phase that preceded it. Um, so, for example, the first validation event will be um, a call for uh, making sure that all the data that has been collected that isn't missing anything so to add extend um, and fill in the gaps of what has been collected the second validation event uh, might be a peer review type of event because there will be a document uh, produced uh, as the analysis and the third event um, is envisioned as a type of workshop. So we very much made sure that we designed these events uh, with the stakeholders and the organizations in mind to make sure that uh, it makes sense for the community. Um, this type of validation doesn't mean that um, any uh, disagreement is discouraged. We very much encourage conversation and uh, discussions and um, finding a way to um, get to a common agreement on how to move forward with these uh, certain um, objectives and results that we will have. Next slide, please. And how it all looks like time-wise. Um, so as Niels mentioned, we the project started in January this year. We had a very lively and full of conversations and discussions kickoff meeting in January. Um, this now is followed by the first phase of the data gathering, uh, which will last until the end of 2023, um, after which we will have the first validation event in January 2024. It might seem quite a lot of time, but if you think about all the data and all that needs to be verified and collected, um, it is important that this is done in a thorough way. So that's why this phase is the one that lasts the long. Um, then we will have the analysis of the collected data 
in until uh, July 2024, which will be followed by a second validation event. Finally, uh, the third validation event will be, as we mentioned, uh, for the recommendations and resources, which will be preceded by the extension of the OAPEN uh, Open Access Boot Toolkit, which you can also find on the OAPEN um, website. This will all be concluded by a final um, conference in December 2024. And throughout this project, um, from uh, early 2023 until the very end, we uh, envision a lot of community engagement, uh, different communication activities, the dissemination of the results, uh, various publications and similar to make sure that the community is engaged, uh, aware, and that can also uh, provide input on the various um, objectives and results that will be uh, produced. So watch this space. We will have more things to, to share with you all, um, as, as Lucy will also uh, mention later on. And I think I'm handing the mic back to Niels. Thank you, Ursula. And uh, if we go to the next slide, please. So uh, just a summary of, of the results that we uh, expect from the project. And, and I should say, of course, immediately that we we don't expect to uh, absolutely change the world with this project, but uh, we are um, on a path towards uh, hopefully encouraging uh, more alignment, more funders uh, considering developing policies, but we are definitely not forcing anyone to do uh, anything, but trying to bring funders and, and other uh, policymakers in this field to, to consider more uh, together how they can um, foster and develop more policies. So, so that's sort of uh, a way to move things a bit forward, hopefully. And what we will deliver uh, will be this knowledge base that we have mentioned now. And as Ursula said, we will, uh, from that knowledge base, create uh, short articles that will be um, um, published uh, through the Open Access Books uh, Toolkit that I just uh, shared a link to. We will also uh, deliver reports, one, for instance, uh, identifying the bottlenecks, so based on the analysis, another one uh, providing actionable recommendations uh, coming out of our investigations. And then uh, this funder forum that I mentioned will be one of the resources that we will develop uh, to bring uh, funders together. And we will have, um, uh, we have sent invitations to research funders across Europe and uh, also uh, beyond Europe uh, already for a first meeting this spring. Then we'll produce uh, two policy briefs during the project to sort of give a, a more high level uh, picture of our findings. Uh, we will definitely produce uh, research data and scientific publications uh, as well. Next slide, please. So um, this will be my final uh, slide just to share uh, with you how Palomera fits into a, a group of projects, ongoing projects um, that are uh, to, to, uh, at different uh, stages and, and different levels, all connected to the OPERAS research infrastructure. Uh, so Craft OA uh, is a project that also began in uh, January 23 uh, this year. Uh, it's about uh, creating uh, a federated technology for open access uh, funded by the EU. So it's about institutional, very much about institutional uh, publishing, not necessarily books, but, but perhaps more journals. The same is true for Diamas, which is about developing uh, uh, resources and, and uh, models for um, the advancement of, uh, of institutional publishing and, and very much focusing on the diamond model. And then there is the uh, uh, also uh, the book analytics dashboard project, which is funded by Mellon Foundation, where OAPEN is working with uh, Curtin University in, in Australia and, and Catherine Skinner from the US to develop uh, aggregated dashboards for open access books, so to monitor usage, and also the uh, open access, uh, the OAEPU uh, GBB uh, Data Trust project, which is about building uh, uh, governance and, and trust ar around um, data gathering of, of uh, OA books uh, usage data. So these projects are in different ways trying to promote uh, in a community driven 
passion, um, equitable and open scholarly publishing. So this is sort of the, the headline we are uh, working, working, around, uh, working uh, towards uh, all of us, uh, the community driven pathways towards equitable and open scholarly publishing. Uh, so Palomera is not uh, standing alone, but, but we have a specific focus on uh, funder policies, on institutional strategies towards open access book publishing. And we are really uh, exploring what is out there. So we are, our data collection is, is, uh, will take us to all the countries uh, around the European research area. So this is more than 30 countries. And we will gather knowledge from uh, documents, from surveys, and from interviews with uh, stakeholders uh, across all these countries. And as I said, also some from beyond Europe. And, and that's our focus. And we will analyze that data and we will then come up with recommendations that are related to books. But just to show you that we also interrelate with other projects uh, that are uh, relevant uh, to us. So with that, uh, I will end my presentation. Thank you very much. And over to you, Lucy. Thanks, Niels. And thanks, Ursula, as well. Um, hopefully that's given everyone a bit more of a kind of high level overview of what Palomira is and what it aims to achieve. Um, more specifically, in terms of how the, the OABN will enable engagement with Palomira, um, we've devised uh, a series that we're calling the Palomira series, which will be a series of open events, uh, which we will host at the OABN. Um, and the intention will be to enable engagement between Palomira and the broader OA Books community. So as Ursula was saying, Palomira is a very stakeholder driven project. That means that engagement with different groups is going to be really important. And the project is going to um, be a, tackling that in different ways, using different channels. But one of the routes that we hope will enable um, stakeholders to engage with Palomira will be the Open Access Books Network and this group of events. So the series will run um, over the, the next two years. And we want to start with a series of stakeholder engagement workshops, which will be aimed at particular groups. So um, at the moment, we're, we're envisaging those groups to be uh, publishers, libraries, infrastructure providers. Um, and it'll be interesting to see actually from today's event whether there are any other um, stakeholder groups that are well represented here. So we might um, be thinking about a specific event for, for that group too. Um, and the intention will be to have a kind of workshop style session with that group um, or with each group to find out specific difficulties that they face with open access books um, and with funder policies. Um, so that will be will be the start and we'll be releasing details about those events uh, quite soon in the next month or so. Um, and then beyond that, um, we hope that there'll be obviously more events in that series that will enable engagement with um, Palomira. And we'll also be sharing blog posts on the OABM website with Palomira project updates. So as a way for you to stay in touch with how Palomira is developing, the kind of work that's being done um, and all those kinds of, of different things. So as I was mentioning um, when I was talking about the OABN at the beginning, there are different ways to stay in touch uh, with Palomira and specifically with what Palomira is doing via the OABN. So um, our mailing list, and I think I already shared the link, um, is the best way if you want just to have um, updates about what's going on, because we will always email that mailing list um, to announce any events that are going on, to share any recordings after events have happened, um, and share any blog posts um, that we publish. We'll also be tweeting a lot, so if you're on Twitter, um, you can follow us there at OA Books Network, and there's the OABN website, which will be where you can access um, the blog, you can access our events page, um, all those kinds of different things. Um, there's also a Palomira LinkedIn group. So this one isn't run by the OABN. In fact, it's administered by Ursula, um, but it's available there if you're on LinkedIn and you want to follow updates about Palomira um, via LinkedIn. Um, but at this point, I would like to stop telling you things and to ask uh, you to tell us a few things. So I'm just gonna stop sharing the slides. Um, and I'm going to launch, hopefully this will work, I'm going to launch a poll um, which has three different questions um, to know a bit more about uh, you, about which stakeholder group or groups you see yourself as belonging to, um, and to find out a bit more about how you might want to engage with Palomira and how we might communicate with you. So I'm going to launch that poll. Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, Niels and Asher are nodding, so hopefully everybody else can as well. Uh, so please go for it and uh, answer that poll. Um, there's three questions. If you just scroll down, you should be able to see them all. So I guess at this point, I will just leave you all for a minute to answer the questions.
I can see that those numbers are ticking up, so thank you. And I can also see that my three groups that I thought the OABM would be able to best engage with are looking about right so far from what people are, are saying on this poll. So I'll give everyone another 30 seconds to uh, put your answers in and then I'll close the poll. Right, I'm going to end that poll there. And I can share the results as well, so in case people are interested. 33% of you said that you're publishers, 49% librarians, and 18% infrastructure providers. Then with 3% funders, 5% researchers, and 3% others. Um, so if you are... Uh, in that other group, I would like to drop in the chat what other you're from, that would be great. I see in the chat, Eric's asked, can we please get off the bird site and join the open Fediverse? Yes. So I've already set up Mastodon accounts for a couple of other projects that I'm involved with, and I will be doing that for the OABN as well. So there will be a, a Mastodon instance from the OABN. Um, whether or not there'll be a Mastodon instance from Palomira, I don't know. Palomira actually currently is not on Twitter at all as Palomira. So it may be that um, it does not appear on either Twitter or Mastodon. We'll have to see. Um, and then it looks like the OABM mailing list is one good way to keep in touch with everybody, which is good to know. And that people are keen for surveys and workshops, uh, or at least they're the most popular options. Um, so at this point, um, we would like to open the floor. If anyone has questions about Palomira, about um, how we might be wanting to engage with the project, how you might be wanting to engage with the project, um, then please drop them in the chat or feel free to turn your video on and ask them um, live as it were. Um, while you gather your thoughts, I've got a few different questions that I can put to Niels and Ursula. Aha, we've got a question. So James Watson says, for phase one of the project, what types of data are you interested in collecting? Niels, I'm gonna pick on you to answer that. I was going to say, Niels, uh, <laughs> okay. okay, you replied that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so basically, um, we are looking at, at, at three different types of, of uh, data collection. Uh, we have, a, we want to look uh, for documents that are relevant uh, in, in, the, in the countries that I've mentioned. Uh, so these documents could be uh, policies, uh, it could be um, documents that uh, relate, that discuss um, policy or discuss open access books more generally. So quite broadly, we're looking for um, any type of, of document related to, to the field. And we have, as I mentioned, we have 16 partners in the project and they have uh, been selected, uh, invited because they are good, because we really uh, uh, have a, we have a strong uh, consortium, but also because they represent different regions of, of Europe. So we, uh, we have um, sort of uh, subdivided the data collection between um, different uh, partners to make sure that we actually uh, get uh, as a broad picture as possible. So currently we are collecting many different types of documents. We are putting them into uh, a Sotero library and these can be written in English, but also in local languages. And then we, we can do uh, a small uh, translation of uh, or abstract translations and so on. But we are really pulling together a lot of documents now and, and structuring them in, the, uh, in this uh, Sotero library. We will open up later uh, after a couple of months, we will open up to the wider community, so including you on this call and everybody else, to uh, to help us if we have over, uh, overlooked something. So we will, uh, in a in a in a structured way, we will announce later, uh, probably around summer, give you an opportunity to to help us uh, providing some of uh, some documents that that you think are are useful that we have not yet come across. 
of course, um, part of, of looking is also to uh, that we won't find something. So not finding policy on OA books uh, will probably um, also be the case in, in quite a few countries, but that's also important uh, to know. Uh, then secondly, we will be uh, launching a survey amongst um, uh, the funders and the institutions uh, later uh, in this spring. And uh, we have on our advisory board, uh, we have a strong advisory board, including uh, European Re uh, Universities Association and Science Europe, uh, who will also be uh, helpful uh, in distributing our survey. And then thirdly, we will do <clears throat> more in-depth uh, interviews with uh, key stakeholders from uh, different countries. And uh, so those are the, the three types of, uh, of uh, data that we will be uh, collecting. And then next to that, uh, led by, by Göttingen and uh, University uh, Library and Bielefeld University Library, we will be uh, uh, gathering different types of quantitative data as well. And in terms of documents, Niels, do you mean specifically policy documents or would they would it range beyond policies? Yeah, so policy documents are, are definitely very interesting. And uh, those are um, also policy documents that that cover open science more broadly. So to understand how how books are being uh, addressed, if at all addressed, uh, sometimes they are addressed, but there are no policy for them. So those are, are key documents, but also uh, other documents, as I mentioned, that relate to OA books in general. So it can be studies about uh, open access books, about business models, about uh, infrastructure gaps, about you know all sorts of things that can be relevant to understand uh, practices and cultures around OA book publishing. It can also be researcher uh, attitudes towards OA book publishing or really any kind of document that, that is, uh, is relevant. So although uh, books are still uh, a sort of a, a smaller field of, of research uh, in, in, in within open access, it's, it's, there are uh, a growing number of interesting reports and studies and uh, blog posts and other things out there that, that we want to uh, be sure to have. Uh... Thanks, Niels. Um, and Sarah Hulbert asks, will you be including commercial publisher models as well as academic institutions? So we are, we are not really uh, excluding anyone in this. So we're, we're trying to understand the landscape uh, and, uh, and what we focus on, of course, uh, primarily will be the funders and the research uh, performing organizations, because those are the ones developing uh, policies and strategies alongside the, the national policymakers. So those groups are our key uh, focus groups. But uh, as Ursula mentioned, the, the validation methodology has been adopted to ensure that we have uh, uh, potentially all stakeholders uh, looking at what we are collecting, what we are analyzing, and what we are recommending to get as many eyes on what we do as possible, because we believe that by considering uh, multiple angles to what we do, we hopefully will end up having better recommendations, more resilient recommendations than only talking to one stakeholder group. So that's the idea. It's definitely to uh, include uh, multiple uh, views on what we're doing. Thanks, Niels. And just to add to that as well, from the OABM point of view, you know, if we hold an event for publishers, it will be for all types of publisher. It won't be for a specific group. Um, so everyone is welcome if you'd like to add more questions in the chat or, as I say, to turn your um, video on and ask a question directly. Um, one of the things that it might be useful to ask is, What's the sort of ultimate outcome of Palomira? Say in like five years time, if everything goes as we might want it to, where what would we like the project to have achieved? <laughs> Are you asking me, Lucy? <laughs> yep. Well, I, th I think, you know, I think, uh, again, sort of coming back to this uh, call for action that we um, that I mentioned as, as one of the background uh, documents for this. So that really sort of brought uh, stakeholders together to think about that, you know, we need 
funders also to consider books uh, in their policies because books are important to uh, many disciplines, particularly to social sciences and humanities. And um, if we don't come up with uh, good um, policies with good strategies uh, and, and remember the funding side of things, then uh, books will sort of remain on the outskirts of uh, open science. And uh, I think it's really about time that we <laughs> carefully consider books uh, as being part of uh, the research uh, publication landscape uh, more broadly. Although there are very uh, quite a few differences between books and journals, uh, of course, as, as most will know, uh, in the way that they are edited, published, uh, funded, and so on. But still, we need to find good ways to also make sure that we can open up uh, those research publications that, that come as uh, books. So I would like to see in a few years' time from this project that we have helped funders come together to learn from each other and to develop policies that are smart and effective in the sense that they have uh, been thought carefully about also uh, from an implementation point of view. That's why we invite stakeholders to give us feedback as we move along in this project so we can pick that up and so that funders uh, uh, are well uh, suited to take into consideration uh, also details that are really important uh, for publishers, for researchers, for, for libraries, for infrastructure providers, and 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 so that in five years time, we will have many more uh, policies and strategies out there for books. I would very much like to see that. Maybe some of the others from the from the project have, um, have ideas as well. Yeah, if anyone else would like to chime in, please do. I'd like to see if any faces appear to help you out, Niels. Oh, I don't know if anyone's gonna do it. Well, I, I can just add something then while, while others think uh, that um, I think it would be great to see uh, what we now built. So we will collect a lot of data. We'll build a knowledge base. Uh, we will uh, create this funder forum. And, and the idea behind the project has been that this should be sustained. So these uh, this knowledge base should be sustained. The, the funder forum should be sustained beyond the project. So we're not just building something for this project and then it will all close after two years and then we'll do something else. So I think we, we what we hope to do is to see that what we create from this project will actually be uh, taken forward uh, and carried on into other projects. Just like the Funder Forum was an idea coming out of uh, a European Research uh, uh, Council funded project and brought to this project, I hope we can see that things will carry on to, to other um, and, and, and build more uh, for the future. But Ursula is there. <laughs> I just wanted to echo uh, what Niels uh, said, but also as someone who is involved in more projects related to the open access books, uh, my wish for an outcome in five years to be that all of these projects bring together even more everyone involved with open access books because I think they have been neglected as was also mentioned for quite some time and as someone who worked in publishing before I can see um, how much attention is given to maybe other products uh, while uh, books can be neglected um, so my wish is that all these projects working on uh, open access books uh, unite even more and we have a, a more spotlight uh, brought to to all of these and uh, help open access books transition uh, even more. Thanks, Alicia. And I think that chimes really well with the OABN as well, because I think one of the reasons for the OABN to exist is precisely for that reason to say, you know, often open access sort of defaults to discussing journals. And it's really important to have a space, to have projects, to have initiatives that are focusing on the book specifically and how we can uh, make more books open access. 
Um, so we've got another question from Holly Limbert. She says, will you be collecting data or working with UKRI when their requirements for long form outputs comes into effect? Given that this project will run alongside the introduction of this requirement from 2024, it will be interesting to know more about how successful this element of their OA policy is. Appreciate that it will take a while for this to bed in. Thanks. Yes. And I think it's right to say that the UKRI policy is that uh, contracts signed after January 2024 um, for books that use research that's funded by UKRI or that um, stem from research that's funded by the UKRI uh, will need to be published open access. So yeah, I'm not, I, it'll be interesting to see actually how many um, such books do appear in 2024. But Niels or Eshel, I don't know if either of you have got any thoughts specifically about working with UKRI. Mm. Yeah, yeah. thanks for the question, uh, Holly. I, I think... Uh, so I think UKRI has has done a very good job in in uh, preparing their policy, but also their follow up and and uh, the uh, sort of following the implementation uh, and and preparing for the implementation for the books. And definitely, we will be uh, collecting uh, information about that. We have a UK partner, as as you may uh, uh, saw on on uh, on the presentation. Uh, we have JISC and we have Open Book Publishers from the UK. So we're definitely collecting. Uh, documents also from from UK and from Ireland, and we we will do interviews. Um, and uh, UKRI will also be uh, represented uh, in our funder forum. And I think it's really interesting to see uh, a big funder like UKRI engaging in this way. And I think other funders can learn a lot from from their experiences. But I also think that some of the the funders uh, in europe like uh, the austrian science council or the swiss national science foundation uh, who have had policies in place for for quite some years they can also you know exchange um, information and and uh, experience with ukri to benefit their implementation because many of the same issues are relevant to to funders and and they but then they have different legal uh, restraints or constraints or challenges that that they they need to take care of. But um, but yes, to to make it short, yes, we will definitely uh, be working with with UKRI as well. And then um, question maybe a bit more for Ursula, but Niels mentioned in his slides. Um, that of course there are a number of other EU funded projects and non-EU funded projects that are working on aspects related to OA book publishing. Um, so is there uh, work going on between any of those organizations in terms of um, outreach and uh, communication with stakeholder groups, given that a lot of them will want to be uh, speaking to the same groups of people? Yes, yeah, so um, as you mentioned at the beginning, I'm also part of the Open Access Book Usage Data Trust effort um, that is funded by the Mellon Foundation from the US, uh, which pretty much wants to um, create a data space that would uh, allow data usage exchange between the various stakeholders that are very much also involved uh, as stakeholders in the Palomera project. Um, and not just the Palmer project, also the uh, book, analytic, book analytics dashboard, I would assume, um, as well. So there is definitely an effort going on in terms of um, community engagement. Um, so um, we will have focus groups, uh, workshops, webinars, and similar, as well as part of that project. Um, and we will be present at various conferences, uh, giving uh, panel discussions, posted presentations and similar. So there will definitely be more communication about this uh, in this year and uh, over the next uh, two years. So I encourage anyone who uh, sees us uh, at various conferences to uh, definitely reach out and um, have a chat with us uh, if you have any questions in person as well. Sometimes it's easier to do this in a conference setting, one on one, instead of in front of a virtual room full of people. So I appreciate that. Um, so feel free to do that as well. And uh, we will also have our Twitter channels and everything for the other projects um, to to communicate this. Uh, we're trying to do this in a centralized way as well, so not to overwhelm the community because there is quite a lot going on. Um, so we prefer to do more of a you know um, workshop slash surveys which I think uh, based on the poll answer um, seems to be the preferred way for everyone as well. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to see the community, at least the one represented here um, feels that way because it is definitely uh, you know, positive feedback 
to know that uh, this type of uh, engagement uh, does work. And if anyone has any suggestions of any other type of engagement, I would definitely encourage them to, to let us know um, because you know uh, it's important to listen and to know what the community prefers. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd echo that, Ashley. If anyone has not just a question, but a suggestion or a point they wanted to, to discuss or that we should be considering, um, please feel free either to drop it in the chat or uh, to, to put your camera on and say, say whatever you like to say. Or if you want to um, drop us an email, um, certainly if anything comes through to info at uh, oabooks.org, I can forward it on. Or I don't know, Ashley, if we have a dedicated Palomira email address. No, we don't, uh, but I just shared my uh, email address on the chat as well. If anyone needs to reach out, um, I will also be at the London Book Fair in a couple of weeks. Um, well, a little bit more than a couple of weeks. So uh, feel free to, to reach out if you want a person chat. Um, but otherwise, yes, they can also, I guess, um, contact you, Lucy, via the OABN. And uh, because we work quite closely, uh, we will be able to share this information among ourselves. And yeah. also uh, feel free to engage on our posts on Twitter and everything. Uh, I will be sharing some via Opera's uh, Twitter or um, as you are going to do that uh, via OABN as well. So any comments or anything like that are welcome. Yeah, I'll be sharing stuff via the OABN Twitter feed and Mastodon as well, because apparently there is demand for an OABN Mastodon. Um, so yeah, and also if we have members of Palomira who are going to to conferences, I will be urging them uh, to mention the fact that they're involved with Palomira, so you can know that you can ask them about the project as well. Um, so this will be a last call then. If anyone has any questions or points they'd like to raise before we conclude, now is your moment to do so for this session. silence maybe i can just jump in here and say well i i think another coming back to your questions about your question about five years ahead and mm -hmm. thinking uh a few years back we, we haven't seen that many projects uh funded by european commission <clears throat> specifically for for books and monographs um uh, actually just very few so i think this is also a very good sign to see that that uh the commission is really um actually uh, taking this this uh, seriously and and uh, helping the community to to get a better understanding of how we can advance uh, open access also for books so and also with with the great crowd here today and and so many people here today i i, I feel really uh, very encouraged so so thanks all for for being here today yeah, thank you, everyone. I'm going to drop the mailing list sign up for the OABN in the chat once more um, so that if you're not already signed up, um, you can do so that way. And then anything that the OABN is doing with Palomira, um, you will find out about via that mailing list. Um, and huge thanks as well to Niels and Ursula uh, for taking the time and for sharing everything um, with us today about Palomira and for being up for answering all my and our questions as well. Um, it's much appreciated. And thanks to the other members of Palomira who are here as well and who said hello at the beginning. Um, it was great to put a few more uh, names and faces uh, to the project. Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, we have recorded this event, so we'll be sharing the recording um, in a few days time via uh, YouTube, via the mailing list and via our website and Twitter. Um, and I think without any more ado, I will wish you all a, a great rest of the day, wherever you are and however long that is. Um, and hopefully see you again soon at another OABN event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucy. Thank Thanks you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.